What is up guys, Wraith here, Great Beauty Gaming Society. We are at it again and this time we are out in Maris Suru. And I'm trying to remember for sure whether this one was Plains of Power or whether it was Shadows of, of Lachlan. Either way, it's still, you know, by this point of the of the actual live servers, you know, still one of the very classic zones. Basically what I've decided to, to kind of go with at least mix them in there and kind of show them in here a little bit too at the same time of doing the very classic things like very classic kunark you know vanilla maybe a little bit of elias you know the next couple expansions kind of revolved around you know the shadows of luckland the moons of luckland and and the zones therein as well as obviously planes of power we jump through planar knowledge etc etc those will end up getting to later but the way that i started kind of thinking about it really was that this is what this server has to offer, so we will peek at it a little bit and kind of take a look at some of them. We're still going to focus on more of the older zones than even these guys, but it's worth kind of pointing some of these zones out, um, for especially for, for what they were. Some of these zones were really great for experience, really great for grouping. This zone here, said Mara Saru, was right off of the Nether Netherbean layer, Netherbean layer tunnel. It's a very long tunnel. It connects to a couple other zones you can kind of make your presence known but mostly with this guy you've got a handful of these little mobs i say little some of these guys are, are way bigger than me you have stone grabbers you have rock hoppers i believe you also have a couple of the light crawlers in here and the but this is a very barren zone semi boring zone there's not a lot of people that get out in the open of this zone even when the when a server is, is newer or when they you know even when this experience was you know, or the server was more, you know, newly released. The big trick with it is if you got a group that could hold it, you'd sit out in some of the kind of center spots and you'd just pull massive amounts of stuff, especially like if you were being power leveled or something like that. For the people who are kind of going their own route, it's a little safer to stay near the wall somewhere, either where you can make a break for the door or, in my case, hopefully, successfully feign death. Now, what's interesting about the zone, you also have these guys here, these little Rakusco guys, or Cuso. And they kind of walk around, and they're they're not going to mess with you unless you mess with them. They do have a faction, so if you kill a couple of them, they'll become aggro to you. But there are some mobs in the zone that they will just outright attack on their own, which is kind of interesting. Mostly like the Zelniak kind of things, the weird horse-looking kind of dudes. They will kind of attack those on sight. And even if you're fighting one, they'll jump in on it. So you have to be careful there. One of the other things about this particular zone, of course, aside from the fact of just honestly how barren this piece is is the mobs will socially aggro now they won't aggro different types but say like these gray hoppers if you hit another gray hopper other gray hoppers will come to the rescue same thing with some of like these beetles you get too close to other beetles and the beetles will come to the rescue so i guess they're they're kind of species specific in in helping each other out but if you're careful you pull slowly back to a wall you get yourself in a pretty good spot it should be a pretty good and easy little fear kite over here for some of these guys. Some of the mobs have more hit points than others. The stone guys, I remember them being being pretty tough. Some of these guys weren't too bad at all. I'm going to pull a couple of them, kind of experiment with a couple of them. As you can see, we've got another guy ro roaming by right now, one of the gray hoppers. Like I said, they won't mess with our beetle at all. We won't have any problems unless our beetle gets near another beetle. So, and I kind of stayed... Kind of narrow on the dots, probably could have gone a little bit heavier on the dots, but say we'd been fighting this gray hopper here is walking by. As soon as this guy got in range, we'd have to deal with two of them. That's just how it works. So you need to be mindful of your surroundings. You need to be careful of what's around you. That much is, is a definite. Now our little beetle over here is, looks like our pet's going to finish him off for us. The dots have run his course. Yeah, we're not even going to cast another another buff on him. But even when you're fighting, like I said, this guy, you know, going to walk right up next to us. He really just doesn't care. Some of them, some of the mobs in the zone, there's quite the far level spread, you know, in the zone. And again, you have to be careful for for the roamers because there are lots and lots of those. And all the same way to get here, like this zone is kind of a stepping stone in this expansion, really, for a lot of people to try to get to Dawn Shroud. Let's see, we're at 52.2. Start a fight with this little yellow guy right here. Hopefully we don't get too much trouble. Pull back to our pet. Yeah, 
pad on the way here. We're actually going to go a little heavier on the dots. Get all of our stuff going up. Get aggro on them too quick. That's, we did turn taunt off on the pet just so when things do break, they do tend to come back towards us and not just sit there and, and duke it out with the pet. But the pet will chase him along with all the dots on him. Should drop relatively quickly. One of the things about this expansion on the whole and, and some of the areas, from, from the raiding perspective, it was fascinating because the mobs, if I'm not mistaken, this was one of the first expansions where you had mobs that had hit points to just obscene quantities. Mobs had a lot of armor class. Mobs didn't take as much damage. So when a lot of raiders first got here, it was a big deal. Some of these fights took a very, very long time. Mobs had a lot of armor class, had a lot more different effects. And at the same time, you had mobs with millions of hit points for the first time ever, which really, some of these fights took forever. So let's see. So our, since it's our pet and not us out there, he should be just fine. He went the little, little guy cruising by because the pet's not going to get as many aggro. If we were closer, I believe we would have had him. And we'll kind of check that later. I'd rather not splat on camera if I can help it. But I'm pretty sure that would have been the case had we been closer. We would have had to, to kind of deal with this problem. But this is like so one of those zones where you pull out 55.7. So so the experience is pretty decent. It's not a crazy high multiplier, but it's not bad. There's, you know, you have to pull the mobs. There's quite a handful of them to pull. They kind of roam all over the place. Again, if you could get a group in some of these areas where you had a handful of people to help just kind of pull non-stop, peel non-stop, especially if you're getting power level, the zone was, was really popular for that. But it should present us with plenty of space to just pull things back to the wall, do some pretty nice, simple fear kiting. As long as we stay back and out of the way, we should be just fine. Get the fear, get the fear, and uh, take a walk. So mostly at this point, it mostly just comes down to, to kind of balancing your mana, kind of keeping tabs on things, make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. It's one of the things about a lot of these newer zones, which is interesting, is you always have some music in some zones. It's way more prevalent, I would say, in some of the Shadows of Luckland zones. I'm not sure how much of this right now is, is coming through. Oh, got a little buddy coming back. Is he actually going to make it to us? He's getting close. Getting close. Ah, there you go. All right, he turns around. But like I said, the music, the background music was definitely very prevalent in some of these zones. Just kind of playing nonstop, which is kind of interesting. So some zones, and when I got to Luckland, I would actually go through and kind of mute this stuff. Turn it down just so I could have something going on the other screen. But as you can see, just, just by doing just the rock hoppers by themselves, like I said, 59.7. Like I said, we're getting about 2 experience. 2% uh, experience per kill, which is not bad. You've got quite the level range on these guys because we've already had a blue, a yellow, and now an even con. So as long as you pay attention, kind of keep your tabs on what you're doing, should be in pretty good shape if you decide to come out here and, and, and do some fear kiting. The, as you get larger, the little stone dudes, I remember them being a little trickier for the melee because they have quite a bit more armor class. And I remember, I want to say I remember them being slightly more resistant. They're kind of one of the bigger guys in the zone. They're kind of a nuisance, really, is what they are. The rock hoppers were really not quite as bad, though. The little bugs, I can't remember what light crawlers I believe they are. I believe there was some in this zone. I know they're very prevalent in Dawn Shroud. But the Dawn Shroud has a lot of mobs that are substantially larger, so you have to be much more careful in that zone than you do in this zone. Save ourselves the fear. Because some of those mobs get quite large quite quickly, and a lot more of them... Unfortunately, you're our kind of KOS, so this zone kind of lures you in. And you run down that other part of that hallway and think you're pretty wide open safe just to get down here and get El Squisho. So one of the other things about this particular zone, depending on where your where your server is at, these little rock hopper hides here. The I believe it was the high quality rock hopper hide. I'm trying to remember. I was never a huge trade school guy, but I remember there was one of the, the hides that came out of here you could make a pretty good penny on for a while if you were going to sit here and farm for a bit. And it's kind of back and forth. We're going to sit here for a while, I believe. going to med back up, do some fear kiting, try to check a couple of the other mobs for the pools and kind of see what's going on. And uh, we will check back in with you guys here after a bit.
Well, there you have it, guys. Mara Saru, Fear Kite style. So we pulled a little bit of everything that we could kind of find. Definitely got some of the Grey Hoppers, got some of the Beetles, got some of the Stone Grabbers, even though we're not going to mess around with this big guy because he would probably give us too many resists. And as you probably saw in the video, they can hit pretty hard. So rather than taking those shots to the face when he gets us a resist, I think I'll take a hard pass. We are closing in on the level. We're, we're pretty close there to, to picking up level 23. Again, it's a pretty good spot. You can pick a, a nice quiet spot on the wall, pull things back, fear kite. You do, as with pretty much any zone you go to, you have to pay attention to the stuff around you, right? Make sure you're not pulling right across other mobs. You know, at this point in most of these servers that you're going to have interest in being here, you're probably going to have the pick of the place to yourself. Like I said, I've been here by myself the whole time I've been here. Haven't seen another soul, which is, you know, creepy and good <laughs> at the same time. So I turned the zone music off because it was driving me nuts. But, you know, it's it's a very drab zone. I'll give it that, right? It's It's not very much to look at. It's not one that's very highly traveled except for people jumping through it really quick. On occasion, like I'm having right now, you get a little bit of bad luck where everything is just super far away from you, and you kind of have to pull, which can kind of stink a little bit, because obviously, as a necro, we don't have Spirit of the Wolf. We don't have any of that kind of stuff. So a lot of times, I've actually been trying to pull with something that doesn't snare, just to really get their attention, to bring them back in the camp, using some zigging and zagging to make sure I don't get smacked around too much before I get back there. Obviously, if you're dueling and you got somebody with you with cell or something like that, more power to you. If you're one of those people who can just go to the store and buy up a mount or something like that, that's also great. Again, one of the things that we'll be doing down the road to kind of ow, solve this problem is, you know, obviously we are going to go the old school route, spend some time. We're going to find ourselves some, some journeyman boots, come hell or high water kind of fix that problem on our own so we can stay out in some of these areas just a little bit safer there's a couple things you know we haven't really talked about specific gear or loot or ideas or things like that but there are definitely a couple of items i think in pretty much any not just any necros toolbox but any serious soloers toolbox in in a classic sense you know things like journeyman boots so you have on demand run speed for the classes that don't have it innately you know, a couple of other good, of course, you know, you'd be remiss to be a Shadow Knight or a Necro and not mention the Circlet of Shadow. Now, there was, that's probably way too much. Yep, there we go. Somebody was kind of selling one earlier here on the channel. You know, the Circlet of Shadow, not to be con confused with the Circlet of Shadows, which is the post nerf. You will only find these on a new server. I think it's prior to Velius, I believe. Once Velius launches, they nerf these things down. But it is a clickable from inventory for Shadow Knights and Necros only that casts Gather Shadows. But if you look at the cast time right here, it is instant. That point one second, you click it, you are in Viz, and you can just chain click it. This thing does not have charges on it. You can go as many times as you need to, which it's very make, makes traveling a lot easier. It makes the feign death into Invis a lot easier, things like that. It is a powerful, powerful item. At the same time, it gets very very expensive very fast on a lot of servers so it's one of those things that while you 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 want to mention it pretty early on it's one of those things that if you want one on most servers you seriously have to commit to it on some of the you know live servers you know where it is still a useful item or can be a useful item up until some high level i uh excuse me i'm about to say ias aas and things like that you know, it can still hold a really high price tag. So if you want something like that, you have to commit to it. Journeyman Boots is something that we can farm on our own and give there. And technically, we could farm the Circlet of Shadows, which it's not the instant casting. It doesn't have the same super powerful utility. But what it does have is still you have always permanently clickable invis from inventory without ever having to mim the spell. So pluses and minuses even there. If you want to spend the time farming that, it comes out of Kunark. But... You know, there would be a couple items along the way that we are going to work on to, to increase our toolbox, our survivability soul toolbox. And and we pick up the ding on that pool, which is pretty cool. But yeah, some items like that we're going to work on. So there will be a video in a, in a later date for sure, focusing on doing things like the Journeyman Boots quest. So we can get that so, make some of our pulling and soloing life a little bit easier. But 
kind of gone off topic quite a bit again. We're talking about Mars Saru, pretty good zone, sitting against the wall, fear kite to your heart's content. Mind what you're doing, obviously, but as you've seen, the experience is pretty good. It's pretty quiet, and you'll hold the place pretty much to your own as long as you kind of pay attention to what's kind of around you. We managed to knock out a level tonight, which is always a bonus when traveling this far out to try to get some footage. Another level or so of farming, and we will probably try out along the way. Dawn Shroud, we will definitely check there. And when we get into that, that 24 ish range, a couple more bards open up to us that should be challenging yet still very doable which that's always the, the catch right it's like part of soloing and soloing efficiently and effectively is not getting hammered non-stop right you need to make sure that you can actually kill the mobs that you're going after so a couple of a couple of bards open up to us then a couple of guards open up to us we can try that and at the same time one of the other things of course that i'm still very interested in doing once we have level 24, we've got a little bit more experience in our belt and another pet who can probably handle the job a little bit better as I have every intention of getting back to the scryer room in Upper Gok and trying to see if we can farm ourselves some updates on that bracelet slot because well, we touched on gear for a second and kind of shimmied back and forth. We really haven't gotten anything to the gear department that we haven't already talked about. We are still looking at and we are in some big trouble because our pet has rolled right across several gray hoppers. So we will be playing dead and we will end the video playing dead. Which is amusing because earlier we walked right through, the pet walked right through something else. Maybe it was because the gray hopper was aggroed upon me at the time and not the pet. Perhaps, potentially. But we're going to end the video playing dead. Like I said, as I was talking about no changes in the gear department, aside from what we talked about last time, Dagger Barnack, our little spore strand shield, what we managed to farm up for ourselves in the bottom half of Befallen. Got a couple other spots we definitely want to try out that I'm really interested in doing, whether it's Evil Eyes again some more, perhaps going back up to Upper Gok and checking out some of the spots there. But another level worth of grinding experience, a couple more spells, another pet, and we'll give it a shot. But until then, this is Ray, and I hope everybody had a good time watching. We will catch you guys next time.